I'm glad a lot of you asked for this next one. I know you probably saw a lot of the Easter eggs that are in the movie, but I guarantee you, you will discover a new Easter egg today or your money back. Let's talk about everything you missed with one of my favorite Disney characters, a Goofy movie. <laughs> Goofy lives next to Mickey in Mickey's Toontown. Well, at least they have a playhouse there. So by having his own movie, we're obviously going to see opportunities for him to shout out his buddy. In Max's room, you see a Mickey Mouse phone. And this Mickey phone is a real phone in real life. When Max takes over the school assembly, if you pause in the audience, you're going to see Mickey is rocking out in the crowd. And when they finally head out on the open road, we'll see his pal Mickey on the side of the road trying to bum a ride with Donald Duck. Now there's a few times in the movie you see a call out to Pinocchio as well. If you listen to it on the open road, they make a direct call out to not having any strings. I got no strings on me. Sound familiar? Got no strings on me. When Max is having a nightmare, he transforms into his dad, just like how when Pinocchio turned into a donkey. He also grows into the size of King Kong. And if you look at Roxanne's dress, you will see it's the same kind of dress that Anne wore in 1933's King Kong. So he's clearly seeing himself as the monster and he sees her as the damsel in distress that doesn't want anything to do with him. These two nerds are sporting Star Trek shirts. And this is also the first time Star Trek has ever been shouted out in a Disney movie. Back in the day, before we could save music to our phones, we had to go to a record store like Love's Music Store. If you look in the same window that Max is looking in, you're going to see an Aladdin record with a genie lamp on it. But if you're thinking that this scene is a cheap knockoff to Titanic being king of the world. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> you might want to rethink that. <laughs> Goofy movie actually came out two years before the Titanic. So who's copying who? On stage we see a pirate ship and a giant skull. Perhaps this is a skull rock from Peter Pan. I mean after all there is a clock tower and a bunch of clouds. But what about the mermaid? It's possible that she's one of the mermaids from Peter Pan as well. But it's more likely that this is a shout out to Ariel from Little Mermaid. And even though this is a little deer and it doesn't have the same exact amount of spots as Bambi, it has the same hairstyle and it has the same black tips on its ears and the same types of spots. So I'm calling this a stuffed animal to Bambi. Not that Bambi was being stuffed. No, he didn't get the same fate his dad did. Too soon? Max, look, it's the Leaning Tower of Cheesa. <laughs> In case you didn't learn this yet, in history, the Leaning Tower of Chiza is a reference to the Leaning Tower of Pisa, which is an example of when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, and then sell it for a bunch of money to tourists that are going to make the same exact joke every single day that a million other people already made. Principal Mazur knows all about making lemonade. He came from a prehistorical time in school when if you acted up in class, you would be sent to the principal's office, and then the principal would literally spank you with a paddle. If you look on the wall in Principal Mazur's office, you will see a collection of paddles on the wall. One of them even has spikes in it. Principal Mazur isn't the only thing here that's prehistoric. Wallace Shawn was the voice of Principal Mazur, and he was also the voice for Rex from Toy Story. Tell me honestly. Another famous name that probably wasn't as famous as Rex, but was just as famous for the sake of the movie, is the, this guy in the Lester the Possum costume. Don't touch me. The voice in the creepy mascot is Kevin Lima, who is the director of a Goofy movie. Of course, we can't ignore Disney's most important name, and that's Walt Disney himself. They mentioned him in a guessing game on the road. You think of a name and I'll try and guess who it is. A uh, man or woman? Oh, man. Man, huh? Hmm. That's a toughie. Oh, let's see. Walt Disney! Right. <laughs> well, I'm good at this. And Max mentions him again later on when he's trying to get his dad to not be so mad at him. Man or woman? Man? Man, okay, uh, Walt Disney. I'm sure you noticed the famous D from Disney on the keychain, but hold the phone here for a second. There's more Mickeys. These next ones are hidden a little bit better than the more obvious ones. On the open road, when all the balloons are flying out of the party van, look closely and you're gonna see some of these balloons are in a Mickey shape. Also, when Max is rushing home when he's on cloud nine from rocking out the concert, pause at the baby high chair scene and you're gonna see a hidden Mickey on the back of the seat. This crazy cat lady in the hot rod is actually a reference to a famous lady that used to be in commercials for Dodge as a little lady from Pasadena. And yeah, that's right, that song was named after her. Remember this couple's face right here. If you keep your eyes peeled near the end of the movie, that lady is who Goofy walks in on backstage. Don't recognize her? That's probably because her wig is taken off, but you can clearly see a picture of her husband in the mirror. He's also working the show. He's the guy that threw Goofy and Max backstage in the luggage. Back then, Powerline is like a modern day version of Toby Mac. 
but his outfit is actually inspired by Devo because along with the weird hats that we saw in Ready Player One, they were also known for CDA style hazmat costumes. Now this one's a little bit obvious, but I have to point out otherwise Vegas is gonna hate me. There's an Elvis or Elvis impersonator. Disney liked the famous Wilhelm scream so much that they put it in the movie twice. The first time was, you guessed it, on the open road when Goofy ran over the construction workers. The second time was at the concert when Max launches the stagehand into the screen. You can hear him screaming the Wilhelm scream. Oh yeah, and let's not forget to mention that Mickey made it to this concert as well. He sure does know how to party. Survey time. So for today's question, I have to give you some background history first. When Pete shows up with his fancy RV, Pete says, <laughs> What a serendipity doodah! Now the first time that Disney introduced the concept of Goofy, he was called Dippy Dog. Then later on they changed his name to Goofy. Another thought here is the famous song in the Disney parades that originated from Walt Disney songs of the South known as Zippity Doodah. So today's survey question is this, do you think Pete is referencing a, to Goofy's original name, or B, the song Zippity Doodah, or C, something entirely different. But if you vote C, please tell everyone else what you're voting for in the bottom, because we don't know. The scary bat cave looks like it's the butt of the mountain, but I actually don't think that's what Disney meant by this little reference. I think they were actually paying respects to Pat Buttram for being a part of so many movies, more specifically for Disney, he played a voice in movies like Robin Hood, Aristocats, Fox and the Hound, and along with obviously playing a voice in a Goofy movie. I doubt this is what he was planning, but this was actually the last movie that he was ever a part of. Fresh on Disney's mind, because Lion King came out a year before Goofy movie, this is a reference to Lion King. <laughs> I think you're a little confused. Wrong! I'm not the one who's confused. You don't even know who you are! When Max looks into the water, he sees Roxanne, but not himself, so you might be asking, how is this the same as Lion King? Well, let's take a second and look at this a little bit deeper. Look how... <sighs> Simba was self-centered and he didn't care about anyone else in the world except for himself. That's why he let the entire Pride Land get destroyed. And that's why he saw his own reflection. All Max cared about was Roxanne, so the reflection shows what our main character is obsessed with first. Then they see their father when they look up to show them that they need to care about others as well. I'm not insightful enough to be a movie critic. Mm. The next easter egg is, you guessed it, when they're on the open road. We see Max is dreaming about Hollywood, but who's in the limo? Now Mickey Mouse is definitely in Hollywood, and he wears white gloves, but we literally just saw him a second ago and he wasn't wearing that color shirt. And he was trying to go the other direction. The only other person I know that not only wears white gloves, but more specifically, a shiny white glove is Michael Jackson. Okay, lastly, a not so questionable easter egg here is when we see Mickey hitchhiking with Donald Duck, we hear Mickey say, <laughs> This is exactly what Walt Disney did in real life. He risked it all to go to California to build the mouse. If you wanna see your name at the end of my videos, click that join button below and become a member. If you enjoyed the show, you might wanna consider subscribing so you don't miss our next adventure. Let me know what movie you wanna talk about next and most importantly of all, Jen Jen Gillette, share a smile, they are contagious. Hey, share a smile, they're contagious. Can you imagine a day without smiling? Whew, that would be outrageous. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with Crazy Nate. Make sure to leave a thumbs up if he left you feeling great. Have fun and we'll see you next time. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for stopping by.